This is precision marching at its finest. The Lafayette High School Band is considered to be one of the finest bands in the country. They've earned their outstanding reputation through a rich tradition of hard work and an intense dedication to the basic fundamentals of music and marching. The driving force behind the Lafayette Band is its director, Stephen Moore. Recently named Kentucky High School Teacher of the Year, Stephen Moore has served as an assistant director at the University of Kentucky. He was also a visual caption coordinator for a top 10 drum and bugle corps. In 1986, Stephen Moore came to Lafayette High School in Lexington, Kentucky. Since then, the Lafayette Band has steadily developed into a standard of excellence. Lafayette has won an unprecedented string of Kentucky State Championships, as well as a record number of championships at the prestigious Contest of Champions in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Believe it or not, a championship band doesn't have to practice any more than most other bands. The secret is focusing on the fundamentals and making the most out of every rehearsal. This video is going to take you behind the scenes of a championship band and show you exactly what to do. Much of what you are about to see is the actual teaching, learning, and rehearsals of students just like you as they prepare on the practice field and in the gym. First of all, you must learn a set of simple commands. We'll show you each one twice. The first is to the ready. To the ready. To the ready. Next is the attention command. Bend in hut. Bend in hut. Dress right dress is used to check rank alignment to the right. Ready front returns you to the normal attention position. Ready, front. Ready, front. Dress left dress allows you to check rank alignment to the left. Dress left dress. Dress left dress. Dress center dress is for checking rank alignment from both ends towards the center. Here are the band horns up and band horns down commands. Band horns up. Band horns down. Band horns up. Band horns down. We're going to show you mark time hut, forward hut, and band halt together in sequence. And finally, the parade rest command. Bend, parade, rest. Bend, parade, rest. Throughout this video, you'll be seeing various examples of just how these commands are used. Before you take your first marching step, you have to know how to stand tall and proud. Here's an exercise that will improve your posture. Okay, posture roll down. Eyes. Head, shoulders, back, waist, relax, waist, rolling up one vertebra at a time, back, shoulders back and down, head up, stretching tall, and eyes. Keeping the body in line with the ears over the shoulders, the shoulders over the hips, hips over the ankles. Knees are not locked, they're relaxed. Heels and toes are together. Here are some other exercises you can use to develop your marching muscles and loosen up your entire body. Up, down, up, down, up, down, double, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up, down, up, and stop. And left foot out and point. 
flex, point, flex, and really stretch, flex, and really stretch it, and point, flex, head row, reverse, Shoulders. The first step we're going to learn is the low mark time. Make it pop. This is one of Lafayette's freshman training sessions at the beginning of band camp. They're learning the low mark time by lifting the heels two inches off the ground while the ball and toe remain touching the ground. The knees are thrust straight forward in a quick snappy motion. You can't allow your hips to swing left and right. You start the mark time with the left knee on count four of the command mark time hut. And let's pop it. Mark time hut and hit, 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 hit. Okay, try to be as efficient as you can. The heel, and let's say the knee is either out or it's in. There's no time in between. Relax. No time in between. It's either out or it's in. Now, if you're really efficient with it, you don't have to work so hard at it. And you don't want to be loose with it. You're not going to be loose. It's going to be crisp. Really pop it. This freshman just doesn't quite have the crisp pop yet. His moves are too loose. On the other hand, this upperclassman is really popping his crisp low mark time. This, when it comes down the field and you see 200 people doing this, popping the red stripe, then you know that that's the best band. The first day of summer band is crucial, especially for the freshmen. And it's important that everybody looks exactly the same. Now, when you, this, this may be the most important day of your marching, because what you set today will become the habit that you have for the rest of the season and maybe for the four years you're in the band. The glide step is the most common step used by marching bands. With the glide step, the heel touches the ground first then the foot rolls forward and the toe lift is exaggerated. The upper body remains firm and does not move. The feet act as shock absorbers. The feet do not cross over at all. Neither is there a space in between them. They're exactly on a straight line. If you drew a pencil line, that's be, they would touch the pencil line on the inside. Let's break down the glide step into 16th notes. In slow motion, one, Heels on the ground, toes extended to its maximum height. E, weight rolls forward, ball and toe of the right foot are still touching the ground, knees are together, and ankles come together, leg swings forward. Ah, uh, continues to swing forward, toe is extended, and the knee is locked. Two, heel touches the ground. E. Weight rolls forward, ball and toe are still on the ground, knees are together, and swings the leg forward, ankles are together, but not touching the ground. Ah, knee is locked, toe is extended. Three, E, and, ah. Uh. Four, E, hold, hold, halt. Glide step breakdown, in rhythm. Mark time four, forward march eight, and halt. Mark time, hut, and four, E, and, uh. One, E, and, uh. Two, E, and, uh. Three, E, and, uh. Four, E, and, uh. And a uh, five e and a uh, six e and a uh, seven e and a uh, eight e and a uh, halt. This exercise should be worked on by the entire band for three to five minutes each day. Always start slowly, then increase the tempo. Good posture must be maintained at all times. The glide step breakdown will only have an impact if it is part of your daily routine all season long. Breaking down the glide step just once a week or even every other rehearsal simply isn't good enough. It must be done at the start of every practice. 
Shifting gears with a glide step is easy using the words lock lock. Lock lock refers to the locking of the knees. Here's an exercise to prepare you for the transition from mark time to forward march. Mark time, hut, and one, two, lock, lock, both knees are locked. This is lock, lock, and take one step forward. Mark time, hut, and one, two, lock, lock, and hit. This exercise mark, should also be part of the band's daily routine. Mark time, hut, and one, two, lock, lock. Take one step. Remember, it's lock, lock, and hit. Mark time, hut. And one, two, lock, lock, and hit, and back. Lock, time, hut, and one, two, lock, lock, and hit, and back. You can use what's called a pull mark time to go from forward march to mark time. Here's how it's done. You lock the left knee, even with the right knee, on the last forward step. The ball and toe of the left foot remain on the ground, freeze to the last moment. Then you're going to snap the left foot sharply into the position of attention. Simultaneously, lift the right heel two inches off the ground. The pull, mark time. Five, six, seven, eight, in. Five, six, seven, eight, in. Now, let's add the mark time. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Again, this exercise should be a part of the band's Five, daily routine six, seven, so you can polish a smooth transition into mark time. Let's go into mark time once with that. Ready? Five, six, five, six, seven, eight, in. Two, three, four. The entire band can use eights and eights to practice both lock, lock, and pull mark time at the same time. Five, four, three, lock, lock. And finally, there's the pull halt. The pull halt is executed by locking the left knee even with the right knee on the last forward step. The ball and toe of the left foot remain on the ground. Freeze to the last moment, then snap the left foot sharply into a halt on beat one. Five, six, seven, pull, halt. Five, six, seven, pull, halt. The next step we're going to learn is the high mark time. With the high mark time, the ankle touches the knee on the end of each beat. The toe remains pointed straight down the leg, and the knees are thrust straight forward in a smooth motion, similar to pedaling a bicycle. Let's break it down. We're going to subdivide the beat into 16th notes. On beat one, feet are flat on the ground. E, heel and ball come off the ground. And, arch of the left foot is locked in with the knee. Uh, toe touches the ground, heel comes straight down the leg. Two. Feet are flat. E, right foot, heel, and ball come up. And, right foot arch touches the left knee. Uh, toe touches the ground. Halt. Back to the position of attention. High mark time breakdown in rhythm. Ready, E, and, uh. One, E, and, uh. Two, E, and, uh. Three, E and a, uh, four, E and a, uh, halt. Now that you've learned how to march the high mark time, it's important you know exactly how to start it. And in order to prepare so that you don't anticipate the high mark time, we're going to push down on the beat with your left foot. It's hard to see anything move, but just push the weight down on the left foot. Mark time, hut down. Now, this will put it in rhythm if you press down on four and then come up on the end of four. It will keep you from uh, anticipating and being ahead of the beat. Let's do down, up now. Mark, time, hut, down, up, and down. And that should put it in rhythm. This is down, up, down. Mark, time, hut, down, up, down. Again. Mark, time, hut, down, up, down. Now we're ready for the high mark time in tempo. Mark. Time, hut, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, halt. The high mark time breakdown exercises and should be practiced daily by the entire band. It looks pretty sloppy in the summer, but daily practice will pay off later in the season. The backwards march is somewhat different than the forward march. First of all, the heels are stretched well off the ground, and only the toe and ball touch the ground. One, 
the feet swing back with no crossover, much like a Nordic track exercise machine. These skis go right on this track, right? You got these skis and they go on a track. You don't go this way. That's the same way you do when you backwards march. The foot goes straight back and drops. Straight back and drops. Of course, you're up. But straight back and drop. And you want to avoid any of this nonsense, all right? Let's break down the backwards march. Backwards march, one step. Mark, time, hut, and one, two, three, four, halt. Weight is up on the toes. Mark time four, backwards march eight, on the toes. Mark time, hut, and one, two, lock, lock. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, halt. Here's another trick. Have the band members practice marching forward on their toes. This exercise will help them march backwards on their toes. Chanting freeze spin is the key to crisp, sharp turns. Here's an easy way to learn turns and practice them. The turn occurs on one. All right, freeze on eight. Mark, time, hut, and four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, band, freeze here. So you see, now he's going to spin on the ball of his foot. And take one step, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, freeze. Spin on one, go. All right, so now on your foot here, take one step back for me. You can see, and put this heel up. Okay, this is what you're going to spin on the ball and the toe, but mostly the ball of your foot. You got your heel, your arch, your ball, and your toe. All right, and so the heel and the arch move together. You can't separate those two, and the ball and the toe separate. So you spin on the ball, okay? Spin. All right, now let's do one to the right. Five, six, seven, eight, hit. And what, so you're, what you're trying to do is get this foot in a straight line again, and notice that the heel is spinning back here. See, it's turned 90 degrees already. Try that again. Five, six, five, six, seven, eight, spin. And the heel turns. Whether you turn left or right, you always spin on the ball of your foot even when you're marching backwards. Five, Let's break down the backwards six, turn. Five, six, seven, eight, hit. Again. Five, six, five, six, seven, eight, hit. Okay, now to the right. Five, six, seven, eight, hit. Again. Notice the toe lift when you take one step in the new direction. Five, six, seven, eight, hit. The best way to practice turns is with box eight drills. Here's box eight to the left. Very nice. Do that again. Box eight to the right. Mark, time, hut. By combining a box eight to the left with one to the right, you can efficiently practice left and right forward turns with one exercise.
Now, what do you do about your instrument position during turns? Well, here's an exercise that will help solve that problem. What I want you to do is put your hands up like this flat. All right. Um, one, two, three to the left and lock on four. Okay. It's going to go one, two, three, lock. One, two, three, lock. One, two, three, lock. One, two, three, lock. Okay. Ready? Hands are up. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, lock. Back, two, three, lock. One, two, three, lock. Bring your hands a little bit further apart, John. Lock. One, two, three, flat. One, two, three, lock. One, two, three, lock. One, two, three, lock. One, two, three, lock. One, two, three, stop. Okay? Now, let's turn to your left and face them with your upper body. Keep face this way. Hands up. Upper body turn. And what you want to do is keep your shoulders flat to the sideline. Flat this way. So the feet face this direction, but the shoulders are flat to the sideline. And not like this. Do it the wrong way. Put your hands up for you. See that? None of this. Now, to go on and twist at the waist and get it turned around so you're flat to the sideline. Put your horns up there. Okay. And then this, this way to the right. Now, what this does is it doesn't constrict your neck so that you can play better. And it looks better and it's more uniform. And you can use your peripheral vision to stay in the form this way. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now let's do the box eight to the left slide version. Okay? And this, this will be important then when they do their first slide to keep their horns facing uh, the press box. Here we go. Box eight to the left slide version. Go. See how they're up on their toes? And it always ends going forward. And of course, the slide version of the box eight can also be done to the right. Next is the slide version of the box eight to the left, followed by to the right. You're turning every direction there is, left and right, going forwards and backwards. It covers every turn as possible. So you'll have the, the turn technique that you need on every single turn. Here we go. Box eight to the left, followed by box eight to the right, slide version. Another turn is to the rear, a move which is always made to the left. Good job, Wayne. Doing all right, okay? All right. Now, your left foot never comes in, okay? It always
turn. It stays back. Five, six, seven, eight, and back. See? Do that with me. Ready? Five, six, five, six, seven, eight, back. Again. Do your best to spin on the ball of your foot. Five, six, five, six, seven, eight. And finally, you can execute turns with a slow horn move, something that's especially effective during ballads. There are three basic ways to hold your horn in the playing position. The first is the normal position, where the horn is held 10 degrees above parallel. The second is the above parallel position, where the horn is held 45 degrees above parallel. The third position is to the box, where the horn is pointed to the press box and the body is twisted at the waist. Snapping into these positions gives the band maximum flash. Spin, horns up, above parallel, normal, to the box, normal, band, horns down. We've saved percussion marching for last because they have a method of marching all their own. One, two. This is called the crab step, designed for all the percussion's moves to the side. Three, four, tall. When you're executing the crab step, if you're going to the left, your right foot crosses over. Of course, you always begin with the left foot. Let's do two steps to the left. Mark time. And one, two, three, four. One, two. Right foot crosses over, and the weight is on the toes. Feet together. If you're going to the right, then the left foot crosses over. And of course, you begin with the left foot. One step to the right. Mark time. Hut. And one, two, three, four, one. Weight again is on the toes, not on the heels. The crab step can be broken down into easy exercises. Time, hut, and one, two, three, four, touch. Heels off the ground, bounce on the toes. Good, and back. Mark, time, hut, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, halt. Mark, time, hut, and one, two, three, four, one. Up on the toes, and back. So if you're going to the left, that foot goes behind. Mark, time, hut, and Four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, halt. One, two, three, and of course, the crab step and turns can be practiced with box drills. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, halt. Now that you've mastered the basics of individual marching, it's time to learn the basics of ensemble marching, techniques and tricks for the whole band. Imagine marching down the field in a block formation. Your alignment is checked in two ways. Staying in line with the people in front of you is called cover. Staying in line with the people next to you in your rank is called dress. Spacing is also checked in two ways. The space between you and the person in front of you is called distance, and the space between you and the person next to you is called interval. The key to maintaining a good interval is something called peripheral vision, the ability to see sideways while looking straight ahead. You can, you can really see pretty far, almost this far, just looking straight ahead. And if you move your eyes at all, you can really see. Okay, now it's okay to move your eyes. You don't move your head, but it's okay to move your eyes. So look, check out the form. And the peripheral vision is, the basic law of marching is you're between two people to maintain a good interval. So you're gonna stay between them and you're gonna use peripheral vision to monitor that distance. Block band marching is an excellent way to learn and practice proper alignment and spacing. It's also the best way to hammer home the basics of overall marching uniformity, perhaps the most important element of a marching band. <laughs> when it's time to start learning the show, each student should receive a set of drill charts okay. printed in the student's view. That means the press box should be at the top of the page. Each drill book should contain the student's coordinates for the entire show. Encourage the students to highlight their own coordinates for each position. Spend about 30 minutes teaching the students how to read the drill charts. Even though some rookies may not learn how to read them right away, they may learn next year. On side two of the 50, you see five different figures starting with the triangle. Those are the bass drums, and the big one is the open one. Okay. Learn the drill slowly at first. 
teach all aspects of the first movement, including horn position, turn in the new direction, upper body position, direction of dress, step size, style, and the emotion of the music. This emphasizes that all elements are important, not just where to begin and end, and above all, be patient. Point to where you're going. Now, if you're not pointing the same person near you, you might want to reconsider. Mark, time, cut, and one, two, ready, go. 20, 19, 18, It's crucial to have a good practice field. The yard lines should be white and on every other yard line paint small yellow dots to represent four steps. It's best to have the hash marks, sideline markers, yard line numbers, and even the center field logo similar to the markings on the field of your most important performance. If you have an asphalt practice field, paint each student's position for every drill page. Use different colors and symbols for each chart. Make sure you paint over last year's markings with black or gray paint. If you have a grass practice field, use poker chips or other colored markers. A long string comes in handy for setting up diagonal formations. Repeat each movement approximately 10 times before going on to the next. Encourage students to look up while marching and check the position of their field marking only after they arrive at that position. The band should rehearse each phrase in these three steps. Mark time and play the musical phrase, march and sing the phrase, then march and play the phrase. It's also important to practice changes of direction. At the end of each phrase, always take one step in the new direction, freeze three seconds, then return to the position of attention. You may also practice the turn at the beginning of the phrase. Yeah, roll around, stretch, yeah. One of the keys to any band's success is a tradition of strong student leadership. Upperclassmen and section leaders play a major role in teaching small groups the fundamentals of marching. They also make sure the underclassmen maintain the proper behavior during rehearsals. The use of student leaders as models is a great is teaching technique. Classes. It's one of the best ways to demonstrate all aspects of marching. It's important to practice the way you perform. You certainly don't talk during a performance. That means you shouldn't be talking during a rehearsal. It's one of a championship band's cardinal rules. If you're really serious about excelling, you'll understand this concept. Your practices should be downright intense. Strive for the look of a champion even as early as band camp. As the marching season progresses, many bands tend to forget about drilling the basics. It's a major mistake. 30% of each rehearsal should be spent on marching and playing fundamentals. Take one look at a championship performance and you'll see that this investment in the basics pays big dividends. It's the middle of October and the Lafayette Band is preparing for its most important contest, the Contest of Champions in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Band camp seems like ancient history, but the Lafayette Band is still polishing the basics. In fact, the band will spend nearly 30 minutes of this rehearsal working on the very same exercises they worked on during summer band. But as you can see, the entire band, even the freshman class, has seasoned into a finely tuned precision marching unit. Right now, they're working on the glide step breakdown. Notice how they gradually increase the speed, working into a smooth, uniform step. Next, the students will march forward on their toes. Remember, this is an exercise that is designed to help you march backwards. And this late in the season, the students make it look like a piece of cake. The band is still chanting freeze spin to make sure they're executing the basics of turns. 
and the band is still using slide box eight drills to efficiently work on both right and left turns, forwards and backwards. You can use this exercise to shift into half-speed marching, a technique frequently used in shows. This is a rocking exercise used to shift from forward marching to backwards marching while facing the same direction. Notice how the students chant rock back and rock forward to help execute the moves. Leave the left foot forward. The band even takes the time to break down the high mark time step. Remember, this is October, not August. Be right on the beat. Mark time. Hut. Don't anticipate. Mark time. Hut. Eights and eights are still used to practice transitions. And the band still breaks down the show set by set. In addition to working on the basics and breaking down the show, you should close out each rehearsal with at least one complete show run-through for continuity. Each rehearsal should be a competition. Compete with yourself, not against other bands. You should always try to better your last performance, even in practice. In this way, you can achieve such a high level of performance and experience the thrill of exciting the audience. It may seem difficult at first, but you can do it. It's simply a matter of dedication to the basics, disciplined rehearsals, and above all, a burning desire to be the very best you can be.